Welcome back to SAFC Live. Myself and Danny are here on the gantry still uh, following that 2-0 home victory against Watford and Sunderland. Made it look easy in the end, really. I'm sure it wasn't out there. Yeah, no, sometimes you have to graft, don't you, and take control of the game. And we said before the game, you know, how's it going to go? They like to have a bit of the ball, uh, possession-wise. Um, but, yeah, I just thought we took the stuffing out of them, really. That goal on half-time, just coming up to half-time from Niall Huggins, you know, there wasn't too much in it before that. We didn't have too many clear-cut opportunities, but obviously neither did they. But then Niall bangs that one in, and then that goes in now at the break. The lads are up there. Yeah. And then obviously Watford have got to try and come out a little bit more. They made a couple of changes. Didn't quite happen for them. Didn't really test Anthony Patterson too much in that second half, did they? And then once we go and get that second, that's pretty much game over. And yeah, fantastic clean sheet again for the lads. You know, back-to-backs now after the one at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, so a lot, a lot of positives to take. Absolutely. We will start by looking through the action then from this evening's game. Uh, Jack Clark, they're playing his song behind us in the Stadium of Light. And in Jack Clark's ty uh, type of games, he had a relatively quiet one. Yeah, he did. He was a little bit loose on the ball at times. But you see what he's all about. He, he keeps going. In the second half, I said it towards the end there, he didn't have too much of the ball in their final third. He had a couple of runs. Porteous brought him down, um, and then just before he went off, he had another little one down the left-hand side as well, but he keeps going, Jack. Um, but, yeah, so when Jack's not quite at his best, other players have to obviously step up as well. And it was the right-hand side we saw the goal from. it was from. the right, yeah, exactly that, yeah. And trying to get down there, and I said, that's that's where our opportunities are this evening. You felt like down the channels, you know, drag the centre-backs out of the, the middle of the box areas, and you'll, and you'll get a little bit of joy. We did at times, and as I say there, in that first half, we weren't quite at our best, you know, in, in terms of on the ball, we had a lot of possession give too many loose passes away at times didn't create too many openings that one there it's, it's a half chance isn't it at best for Jovi chops back onto his perhaps his weaker left foot and then you see there it's not the cleanest of strikes comfortable for, for Backman down to his left hand side um, had a good game job though didn't he yeah he did yeah you know every time I'm watching him now for it I keep saying 17 I know he's just turned 18 but he looks a lot more mature than, than, than what his age suggests you know in terms of his football and ability and his awareness you know his his technique, everything about him, he glides across the grass, uh, covers so much distance when he's out on the pitch as well. Probably 13k plus this evening, you know, for a centre midfielder. You've got to have a good engine on you, and he's got that in his locker. Um, but in there, again, alongside Daniel, Dan perhaps wasn't at his best tonight, showed good glimpses at times, gave one or two away, got caught on one in the second half. But we, we've got more than enough out there. You look at the lads coming off the bench as well, you know, Oshish coming into it looks a player as well from what we've seen of him looks a confident boy he wants to get on free kicks and make things happen Patrick again seeing Patrick he's obviously I think that's his fifth start out of ten games so he's only started half of the games yep. um, and his injury issue obviously and then Abdullah Bar kept him out of the team for a few games but Patrick looked at times tonight like he's getting back to his best you know his, his sharpness is getting there as well what he's all about Patrick yeah, he did a couple of spins on this touch he line did yeah he well. got out one did a little Cruyff turn I think it was got away from his man but 70 odd minutes under his belt Tony brings him off, keeps him then, you know, keeps him fresh for the weekend. Um, yeah, against set plays, they had one or two balls they put in there, didn't make the most of it did, really. Did you feel at any period of time this evening in the game that Watford were threatening Sunderland? No, I didn't think, said it there, didn't I, just off air to you, that I don't think they had that five, ten minute spell of sustained pressure where they had a lot of the ball. We got edgy, forced us back. That didn't happen for them. They say Ismaili made a few changes, made two at half time, then he made another double substitution not long after trying to get them into the game but let's just pause on that and talk about this man's finish there and, you know it's been tough for him at Sunderland he's had injury after injury I said I've seen him I've had a few chats with him at the training ground he looked fed up frustrated you know it's hard graft he's had to train with the 21s at times he came out with the 18s um, just trying to get his fitness going and he was breaking down and obviously sometimes you have one injury which has given you a lot of problems and then obviously that forces another injury in your body because that's trying to overcompensate the workload um, but he's got there, he's had a full season, pre-season, sorry, under his belt now. He's had opportunity to get in the team through Dennis being injured, and obviously Adji at left-back, but tonight he's shifted across the right-back and he's took his opportunity. It's been fantastic last couple of games, energy levels, you can see it there with him, match sharpness, uh, and just there, opportunity opens up for him, and I said it, takes the game by the scruff of the neck. Nothing really happening in terms of ch uh, chances created for us. In that first 45 minutes, he says, do you know what? It opens up for me now, and he took the opportunity, went past three or four. You can see the Watford lads arguing with each other, uh, and bang, he puts his foot through it. And looks, as you said there, Frank, he looks better, doesn't it, when it comes off the, yeah. the underside of the crossbar. So that got us in then, you know, uh, at half-time, that half-chance there at best for them. Um, 
And then we're into the into the second half now, I think, aren't we? That one uh, comfortable for Anthony Patterson, yeah, you know. Routine save that. Routine, isn't it? as you say, it's warm up stuff for him, isn't it, really? Uh, and they, they made one or two changes. A sprayer couldn't really get into the game. Obviously, no, Andrews come on, five sent changes, off. I think by around 75 minutes yeah. or something like that, didn't they? Yeah, so you can see, you know, rightly so from his point of view, he's trying to get a, trying to get them going, isn't he? As I say, they didn't really have a, a good period of pressure in the game, really, or control the game as such. And Dan Ballard coming close again, got himself one at Sheffield Wednesday last week. On that one there, his eyes would have lit up. It's a lovely little floated ball in from Patrick over the top of Porteous and can't just get over the top of it and direct it into that bottom corner. Um, and then we did have a little bit of pressure building now, you could feel it, couldn't you? And that's the one that in the build-up to the goal we thought he'd... he'd I'd see it from this angle, I think it just... Yeah, you can see it just takes a nick off uh, off the shin of the Watford full-back there. And there it is, ball into the box, comes out to, to Dan Neal, feeds it out right. It's burst over, he's pulled out there. Job's over the top of his man. And now I've done a bar. He's great leap on him. Not only is it a good leap, but it's quite brave as well. He got a goal yeah, keeper coming out. Yeah, I on the goalie coming out. Yeah, and he just gets ahead of there. A backman. He could have clattered into him, but he thinks, you know what? I want another goal. He say he got, a, he got one down at Queens Park Rangers. Then he lovely finished that day. He wasn't quite on the half volley. Controlled it with his left foot, and that one there, that would have felt like it was up in the air for for ages. Then <laughs> as he's watching that off Joe, it's a loopy header. He's, as you say, he'll have an eye on the goalie, and he does get caught a little bit. But from, at first view, and I thought it had gone side netting from from where we're looking on the, on the gantry side but uh, no nah, and that, that puts the game to bed then it's that little cushion you've got as I say Watford haven't really threatened throughout the, the night up until that point and that just takes the pressure off and the lads enjoyed it then the Ole's come out and then Oshish off the bench first well touches could have made it three couldn't he goalie does well spreads himself and it gets a little bit on it doesn't he and it just takes the pace off the ball. Just keep an eye on Porteous on the line as well. He looks yeah. like he's falling backwards, so if anyone was to follow this in... Let's have a look. I don't think he's capable of stopping it. Watch, he just falls into the back of the net. Yeah, just trying to put the brakes on. A little bit slippy out there now, isn't it? Rain came down at half-time and... Yeah, I think the goalkeeper does enough, doesn't he? I think it's Coney running back there, trying to get back at him, just trying to throw it through his legs. And he just gets back there. Porteous to deal with it. This is the one you were on about. You thought this was a penalty first view, didn't you? But just keep an eye on the ball. It gets enough it's on it. It's the manner in which Trey goes down, isn't it? Yeah. Which suggests there was a foul in there, but there wasn't. Yeah, we're not seeing that on the back. Yeah, and just look at the player's reaction. Nobody's asking for the penalty. And then it's loser, isn't it? Yeah. Um, shunting Luke O'Neill. Here we go now. Let's have a look at it back. Just gets away from Trey. He has to tow it past the man. Keep your eye on it. And it comes across. There, see, he flicks it almost with his calf, isn't he? I know, he? but I think he's a little bit out of control there. And I know it's wet conditions, yeah. Danny, but I think... Even though he does actually make contact with Trey Hume, there's real danger he could have, he could have yeah. injured. I don't think it's any no. worse than this, to be honest. Let's have a look. That one, no, yeah, that's nasty. Well, he doesn't get any of the ball there, does he? Well, he doesn't get any and of the ball. And he clatters Jack Clark. I, I, don't, I don't know if that was a red card decision. Um, no, harsh, isn't it? I think sometimes you go off players' reactions. Look at the yeah. penalty shout there. Even Trey's not asking. There's two or three Sunderland players around it. Nobody, not one player asks the referee for we're a not penalty. We're not complaining. We're about not complaining. It. And then that one there, yeah, it's a little bit late. I thought it was a yellow straight away, and then the red comes out to say we're not complaining. Game's pretty much done, isn't it? Two 0 up. Down to ten men. Watford. Five minutes or so left on the clock, and it was just a case of keep balling. Okay then. Um, you just had a cheeky first glyph yeah, there. Pop, pop the one. hashtags there. So let's have a look at the the one that's ready in the waiting in the wings. Let's have a look. Hashtag Astani. This is from Ramon who says, Greets from Jarl and Ramon from Edda in the Netherlands. Greetings to you as well, Ramon. Thanks for watching. It's always good to see our fans around the world. Have we got any more? Oh, we've got a few more, I understand. So let's go for it. And then we'll have a look at the... Uh, after we do these, we'll, we'll do the uh, final scores and the league table to end with. So this one's from Andy who says, another good result and performance, but is it a worry our strikers aren't scoring? <laughs> a word on Mason Burstow's performance tonight because, he, to be honest, I think he got a couple of decisions against him where the, I felt the referee should have given him some yeah, fouls. when he Centre-back's coming through him a little bit. Good positions. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Um, again, he's, it's, it's an awkward one for him because he works really hard. He's putting centre-backs under pressure. Mm -hmm. Link up play at times was quite good, getting hold of it, dropping it off. Um, but yeah, has he had an opportunity? Now? I don't think he has, has he? So he'll be frustrated. You know, naturally, fans and and strikers themselves are thinking, "What am I judged on?" And scoring goals. Mm -hmm. And we said it. We said it in the last couple of weeks. Now Rusin's waiting to come on. Hemi is waiting to come on. So and all three of those are waiting for their first goal for the club. Aren't Meander's they? not far away. Meander as well when he comes into it. Yeah. So I get I get the question, but the worry is I, I worry when we're not scoring goals as a team. Now we've put obviously five past Southampton. 
Uh, three at Blackburn, three at Queen's Park Rangers, three at Sheffield Wednesday, two tonight. Blank against Cardiff. So, you know, take that out of it. We were knocking on the door, better team against Cardiff, couldn't break them down. So we're scoring goals. I think we're second top scorers in the league now. Um, so in terms of that, is it a concern? Not as such, but yeah, of course, you want you want that main focal point, your number nine scoring goals. And more often than not, if you see a team who are competing at the top end of the league for automatics, playoffs, whatever, that, that top bracket of six teams, you've got someone who's getting you 15, 20 goals a season. And at that moment, we haven't got that with the strikers, but thankfully everybody else is chipping in with goals. Yes, let's have a look at another thought then. From Michael, greetings from Vilnius. Uh, it's a long time since we entered every game expecting to win. Do you think something special is brewing, Danny? Thanks, Michael. Yeah, good question. And uh, going into every game and expecting us, expecting us to win it. Um, would I say that? I'm, I'm, you were confident I, this I'm evening. I'm confident, yeah. That's what I said coming onto the gantry. I fancy us 2-0 tonight. Got the scoreline right. Uh, I fancy us to beat Cardiff, though. <laughs> I didn't get that one right. But uh, no, yeah, I, I'm like him there. I've looked at every game so far this season. We've lost three. I thought we were the better team at Preston. Got caught there, a couple of goals, scruffy goals. Um, Cardiff, bit of a smash and grab. They didn't offer too much. 87 minutes on the clock, bang, 1-0. Ipswich game could have gone either way. You see Ipswich, they're, they're free scoring themselves. They had a few top opportunities. The They've got good players at the top end of the pitch who can hurt you. Can they sustain um, for the season, though? That's the question, isn't it? Mm. But so have we. You know, you've got Jack out there. When you've got Jack out there, when you've got Patrick getting back up to speed, you know, Abdullah Bar, you've got midfielders, Job, who's got himself a couple of goals other lads who are going to chip in for goals as well um, so we're going to cause teams problems and I think everybody knows about us now you know obviously we're, we're on telly more often than not um, teams will obviously do their homework in the build up to the games but it's it's stopping us as well now and I, you know, we say if it's an open game I think we're obviously going to create chances and I fancy us to come out on top more often than not sometimes when it, we're, we're going to get caught out is at home when teams come and sit deep don't really want to come out and have a, have a go at us mm -hmm. The crowd get a little bit frustrated. The opposition slow the game down, set plays, free kicks, etc. Substitutions, um, and that you know the Cardiff game is obviously a prime example. But there are going to be other teams who are going to come up, come up here this season, and that's how the game's going to go. So we're going to have to get used to it, yep. and that's why people are saying that question is the home and the away form. It's not so much the form really; it's just the, the t in terms of how the opposition set up and go about the game, you know, and, when... And how we get around that. Yeah, yeah. When, when we go away from home, obviously the onus is more often not on the home team, you know, yeah. it's their, their crowd yeah. are in there. They want to see them on the front foot getting at us, trying to score goals. And that obviously on the turnover, you look at the the second goal at, at Sheffield Wednesday, prime example, I think it was Patterson for them, had the ball. We nick it off him, bang, 10 seconds later, the ball's in the back of the net. And that's yeah. the type of goal, what you'll see from us if teams want to have a bit of a go at us. Um, but yeah, I'm certainly confident whoever we come up against, and now the... You know, we say it there that the league table's taking shape 10 games in now. That's when we start to look at it. There's a little gap opening up there. Don't get ahead of ourselves, of course, but I'm confident going into games. I'm sure the lads in the changing room are a lot of young lads there playing with confidence out there. Said it there. Some of the technical ability we've got in the team, the confidence in them. Uh, I'm sure they all enjoy training, getting around each other as well. And I, I think that shows on the pitch. Let's have a look at another thought here on hashtag Ask Danny. This one's from Andrew. It says, if you had to guess which team was in the Premier two years ago, touched upon this in, in, in commentary, uh, which one? And you'd be wrong. Very impressive performance. Yeah, I think Watford looked like a championship side this evening. Yeah, you know, you've said that. And I think looking at, the, the again, the Sheffield Wednesday game the other night, I know they're struggling. They've just come up, but it almost looked like that looked like a cup tie, really. Uh, you know, a couple of leagues between the two sides, maybe. Um, but yeah, I know I know what you're saying there. They've obviously come down, and Watford for me are one of those teams in there. You know, you've got a Fulham sort of Norwich, West Brom that bracket of you'd expect them to be top end of Championship, bottom yeah. end of Premier League. But obviously they're at the wrong end this time round. Um, you said their new manager's had his uh, he's had his contract. Sorry, 10, 11 games into the season, he's been beat again this evening, uh, and we know what Watford are like in terms of letting their managers go. Um, but yeah, I think if you come to the stadium tonight, you, he's he's right in what he's saying there. You know, looking at us there, we look like a team who are where we are in the league, but top end of the table. Lads are full of confidence. Um, not saying arrogance at times, but the way we just slow the game down and teams are almost fearful now of coming to press us. When you see Dan Ballard and Luke O'Nine on the ball, they're worried that we're going to pop it through them and get it out to Jack and Patrick Abdullah out on the touchlines. Um, but it's good to watch. I say we're up here as commentators, but just being up here, and I enjoy coming to the stadium. I like watching the games, um, as I'm sure... Me, what was it? 38,000 fans yep. do as well. 38,000. Let's have a look at another thought here on hashtag Ask Danny. 
from Nazim, who says, up at 3 a.m. here in Singapore to see a very convincing home game performance and two great goals. Yeah, well good, worth your time getting up at 3 a.m. Fantastic stuff. And the final one from Ryan says, will Luke 9 be remembered as a cult hero for Sunderland uh, when he leaves or retires? In the same way, the likes of Gary Bennett is regarded and remembered. Well, he's been with the club, was it four or five years now, I think? Yeah. Uh, he's just signed uh, an extension as well here. Yep. So he's going to be around for at least a season or at least the end of this season, yeah. and if more probably. And we know how much Tony Mowbray rates him. We know how much people around the club rate him. And it's those kind of people who have been with us through League One, hopefully back into the Premier League as well. Yeah. If we do achieve that, that of course will be remembered as cold heroes, won't they? Well, it will, yeah, if you want to put him in that category. Obviously, you're looking at likes of Nyron Nosworthy in my time. I know that sort of relationship he had with the fans as well. Uh, but, yeah, listen, we, we chat to Luke a fair bit, don't we? When obviously down at the training ground. He's a character. Um, he, he'll get on with the job wherever he's asked to play by the manager. We've seen him in numerous positions. I think the only place he hasn't played is in goal since he's been at the club, hasn't he? Um, I think he just, Still time. Yeah, and I, he just gets the club, doesn't he? He, he gets is. the club. I think he loves being here. He had a difficult start. I think he's, he's talked about it, hasn't he, on his debut. He got hooked early on, yep. I think. Uh, and he had, to, he had to work and fight to get back into the team. Um, but yeah, you can see him out there tonight. And he, you know, I, I gave man of the match to Niall, but Luke was certainly up there as well. Yeah. And I know obviously people have questioned about him playing at the back. You know, Danny Bart was let go. We brought in two young centre backs who were sat on the bench behind Luke. Uh, but that partnership he's got with Dan Ballard, they look excellent together. Complement each other a little bit. You know, Luke can look after himself as well. He's not the biggest, but he's a little bit naughty. Comes across as that choir boy, doesn't he? But he's got that little naughty side to wind the opposition players up as well. Um, but composure on the ball. Two good feet. I think he's underestimated by players, maybe the fans as well. Uh, I know he works really hard at his game. You know, he puts the, puts the shift in at the training ground, puts the hours in, and he's getting his rewards now. You know, he's got the armband on, um, and he's in a good place, I think, and he's enjoying being out there as a Sunderland captain. Cool. Very good. I'm sure a lot of people will agree. Let's have a look at the latest scores then. Well, final scores for this evening. Coventry City 1, Blackburn Rovers 0, Leeds United 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0, Leicester City 3, Preston North End 0, big result at the top end of the table, Swansea City 2, Norwich City 1, Rotherham United beaten at home by two goals to one by Bristol City. Let's see what that does to the league table. Of course, there was games played last night as well. Sunderland sit in fourth on 19 points. Yeah. And look at all those other teams on 16, just below them yeah, as good well. Yeah, cluster there. Look at the goal difference as well. Set their second best goal difference. Leicester flying, to be fair. I think they've, they've won all their away games and starting to cook at home as well now, aren't they? But credit to Ipswich. You know, come up, you look at the, the contrast there between Ipswich and obviously Sheffield Wednesday. Point behind Preston. And Ipswich have cacked on and Preston. I think they've had a couple of that's back to back poor results for them now. And Goal difference is right know, down. Again, I look at Preston, we only seen them over 90 minutes, but I thought they were quite poor when yeah. we played them away. But, you know, they're up there for a reason, digging in in games. But, yeah, they've had a couple of poor results now. But, yeah, look, 10 games in, Frankie, we're at that stage where we talk about the table. 10 games in, you we know, can look at this. We're going to be looking at it position. on Saturday as well. And that's where yeah. our attention turns because Saturday is when Sunderland are back in action at home here, the Stadium of Light. Keep the generators running. A 12.30 kickoff. And uh, we'll be on air from 11.45, all being well here on SAFC Live. Go to sfc.com for your matchday streaming passes. So of course, you can access the game via the SAFC app as well. Another victory for Sunderland, 2-0 at home against Watford. We'll see you next time.